belong here now. Like it's to me, I was just a participant in the, in those fights. I didn't feel like a proper UFC fighter. So now to to be able to get that 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 W, it's, it's huge to me. Does that instill a level of confidence? Like yes, I do deserve to be here. Does that does that do something for you mentally now? Yeah. Just to get that. Yeah, done? for sure. Like the my last two fights, obviously, like I didn't get the result that I wanted. But now that I finally did get the result that I wanted in the premiere show, it's just given me a world of confidence. So, yeah. Do you want to take this? I mean, obviously, you want to take this. Do you want to take this and use this momentum, try and get back in there quickly, just try and build on this and get yeah, something rolling? Yeah, for sure. I know it's tough with, with me being in Australia, and it's sort of hard to get these, these fights uh, lined up, especially coming off a draw and coming off a loss. It's kind of be like, oh, where do we really put me in, in, in the scheme of things? But uh, now that I've got a, a W and I'm got the momentum rolling now I'd, I'd like to fight sooner so how old are you i'm 20 uh, 27 on monday still a whip, <laughs> just a young whippersnapper um so what is the situation with your region do you have to quarantine all that sort of stuff? yeah so right so like we'll leave um we'll leave on sunday night and then we'll land there on tuesday and then we have to do two weeks worth of quarantine there, so awesome <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned in your post fight that uh, a message to your girlfriend. You told her so. I, I'm curious what it is that. So my uh, my girlfriend is uh, she suffers from anxiety and she obviously hates me fighting. She 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 really struggles with the the fact that I fight. And for for me, I always say to her like, even before I got to the UFC and I was fighting regionally, she she was always nervous. She was always a wreck. And then to finally like, I. I'm going to do the same thing that I used to do is that I'm going to tell you at the end of it all, I'm going to be like, I told you so, I told you so, I'm fine. You don't have to worry about me. I trained my ass off and I, you don't have to worry about me. So that, that was just like a, a little message to her saying, I told you so. So does she prefer to not be at the fights then? Like, do you think it's easier for her to watch on TV or is it worse? Um, I don't know, but she, she still, yeah, she still struggles regardless, but I, I feel like she, she's better when she's with her friends and stuff. So that, that usually helps her out. Thank you. And now at this level, you can um, you can buy more gifts to, to ease the anxiety, <laughs> right? As you keep going up the ranks, right? Don't get any idea? She's probably gonna watch this interview now. She's gonna be like, I know what I want. She's like, you I know? like it when I, you fight. Now. I know I what like I want. It when you fight. So the jabs were very very effective out there. Was that a big part of the game plan? And kind of what was the game plan for him going into this fight? It, exactly what you guys saw is is to take center stage, pick my shots, let him overcommit, let him. Let him feel like he can get those takedowns. Let him let him burn his energy. I, I know that he's he's fought a lot at lightweight. I think this is probably his first time going down the featherweight. And for him to just use his energy to try to take me down, take me down, take me down, and never really secure a position where he can rest once he gets a takedown, uh, that was a, that was a massive uh, massive game plan to to be able to get this guy to work hard, and then for me just to pop back up to my feet and then realize that you know he's gas, so I can start to pick my shots. So that was a massive game plan. So when you're going out there and you're implementing the game plan, you can see it start to work. And, and you know, even though, like you said before, you were sort of having doubts, you know, you had the, the decision, you had the, the, the draw, you had the loss. Is there moments in there where you could feel yourself belonging as the fight was going on, as it was starting to play out, how you had prepared for it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, and just like, so this will be my third time now and just being a, being a part of everything, being able to see um, like how the show goes behind the scenes. It's just adding all to that comfort of just being in there and just making it feel like uh, a normal session, like a normal. It's becoming natural to me now. So now, now that I feel like I'm getting more comfortable in, in fighting for the UFC, I think my performances are just going to keep skyrocketing up. So, yeah. And I'm, tr I'm trying to think. The last time you fought, were, were, were things still open, or did you get it? Did you get a fight in right before the world sort of shut down? Or so, yeah, so I got I, I got to fight live in New Zealand in a live stadium and then literally a week after that's when it started to like really COVID started to really kick in then how big of a difference was the two different fight weeks for you massive massive so well I was on Fight Island as well so that was that was that was a cool experience but yeah. like fighting here at the Apex now and then it was very similar but still like yeah it's becoming natural to me yeah I was gonna say a lot of fighters have come into this sort of thing especially liking the quietness liking being able to hear their coaches like being able to just sort of be it with themselves and not having the the pressure of all the fans and stuff, but where do you sort of sit? Are you hoping for the fans or are you kind of enjoying what we, the current situation? I, I like the fans in terms of like, it gives you that extra boost, you know, but I also like it being quiet because my coach 
he's a very quiet person. Like he'll scream and it's still hard to hear him. So it, it's good to be able to like look at my corner and actually hear him say what he what I need to do. So I, I, I for for if we could, we could get like guys for us uh, a crowd to cheer when we walk in and then for them to leave <laughs> and then just fight without the crowd that, that'd be preferred so i'd like yeah it'd be good to have a crowd to, to cheer you on as you walked out and then let and them then leave the and then let, let my coaches do their job you know what i mean so all right so i guess what's the immediate steps after this do you do you get back right back in the gym do you allow yourself some time to sort of celebrate the victory or you know what sort of are you setting up for well yourself after i'm this? giving myself the two weeks in quarantine to sort of like get it out of the way and then i'm straight back into it because Man, I feel like from my last fight, I, I didn't stop training and I just kept kept consistent with my training and then just to be able to see the, my, my shape, my body, my fitness level, my technique, everything just improved tenfold just because I didn't, I didn't lay off the, the gas. So I'd like to jump straight back in, you know, I'd like to get another fight, you know, uh, hopefully get, get a bigger fight, you know, like I said, I'd like to fight either September or November would be cool too. So any of those times would be, would be optimal for me and, and that seems to make sense we always hear fighters saying they want to peak at the right time mm -hmm. do you feel that coming from the camps and the time that you pe just peaked at the right point for this fight that maybe was separate from the other performances no I, I just feel like I'm just constantly improving I I, I think things that things that I usually struggle with um, just seem to come easier now and uh, I think just a big part of it was just being consistent it's something that I lacked throughout my my, uh, my whole pro career I used to have a fight, you know, booked, and then I'd train only for that booked fight. And then after that fight, eat junk food, I'd drink, go out, and then, all right, now I've got to fight in six weeks, seven weeks again. And then I'm back on the, you know, my, most of my camps were just fat camps, just to lose, lose the fat, you know what I mean? So I was never really consistent with it. And now that I've finally got here and I realize how important it is to just be ready, stay ready, be ready, you know? So just being consistent has, has already has already leveled me up so much so I could only just imagine if I do start peaking at the right times and getting the right fights at the right times just imagine the performances I can do then and I guess riding that momentum for the rest of 2021 what sort of goals are you setting for yourself by the end of the year like I said I'd like to fight two more times uh, September uh, September or November either of those um, and yeah I'd, I'd like to be on the Volkanovski uh, Ortega fight so that whenever they, they announce that I'd like to be I'd like to be on that card so Best of luck. Have you talked to the, the girl yet? The girl? Your girlfriend? Have you talked no, to her? No, yet. no yeah, I haven't even grabbed my phone yet. I haven't been able to speak to her yet, no. <laughs> I look forward to see how that conversation goes. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, just a quick one. I know the champ, and you just mentioned him, Alex Volkanovsky. He was in. He's very supportive and congratula uh, congratulated you afterwards. How did it feel to kind of have him in there and, you know, if he said anything to you afterwards? It's 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 the best. He's he's the world champion, and that's my boy. You know, he's uh, he's the champ, and um, yeah, it's just awesome to have the champ supporting you like that. Uh, just because we we've trained back home together, and it's it's a big deal for me, and for him to be here, obviously because he's here for the filming, it's a it's a big deal to to have him in the corner and, and supporting me. So it's massive. What's the best piece of advice that he's ever given you? He's never really said too much as in advice. He's always uh, sh showed what he, like, what he was doing. So like, he never really said any advice, but just by watching him day to day, because I was involved with his uh, Max Holloway 2 um, fight camp, I was just able to see his work ethic, the way he treats people. He's just all around a champion in and out of the cage. So like, to me, that's something that I, I look up to is, is, is just you know, him being a champion and him not changing just because he's a champion. You know, he's still the typical Aussie bloke. So that, that's what I aspire to be. I still want to be myself regardless of what happens. I'm st I'm st I st yeah, I just want to be who I am. I don't want to put on a front. don't want to be fake. You know, I'm just going to be me. I'm a happy guy, happy, friendly guy. And that, that's what I want to be all the way through my whole career. And do you have any birthday plans? Even though it's in quarantine, but... How how do you spend that time? Well, the boys, my my coaches in my 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 corner, they they want to hit up uh, the strip. So I think we're going to hit up the strip, and uh, we'll we'll see where that takes us. Happy early birthday and congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Thanks, guys. You said strip, and my brain turned. Yeah. <laughs>